Hey everyone, welcome back to How Tech. Today we have an iPhone 12 Pro Max with the super awesome camera, and we're just gonna demonstrate it a little bit. Uh, this is not gonna be like a super detailed uh, pixel by pixel comparison, but we just wanna run through it so you guys can get an idea of the capabilities and the peculiarities of this particular phone. So keep in mind that unlike the iPhone 12 Pro, this actually has a enhanced sensor. I guess it's a bigger sensor, so it should have better nighttime or low light capabilities although most tests say that because they're doing so much you know in camera processing computational photography whatever they call it um, this bigger sensor smaller sensor is actually almost as good so if you paid the extra money for this hopefully you're not too disappointed but basically the the smaller cheaper one still does almost as good a job the other big detail with this is that it has a 2.5x uh, telephoto as opposed to 2x on the regular phones so slightly better not huge amount but yeah let's take a look at the camera obviously don't forget you can also pull down and go to the camera here in case you didn't know that so um yeah here's what it looks like it's basically the same as anything running ios 14. uh the main difference is that yeah you have two and a half can you guys see that two and a half times zoom suddenly so that and also these newer phones have the hold it down and start recording, and then you can also lock that. So one question I have, and I guess we could check in this video, is the aspect ratio here now, is it recording just what I saw in my viewfinder before I started recording, or is it seeing this part, as you can see, like that's showing up on screen, but is it showing up in the video? Okay, let's just check, because I'm curious. So what happens when I, okay, forget that. Let's even turn on the sound. Go here now. Is it recording just what I saw in my viewfinder before I started recording? Or is it seeing this part as you can see like that's showing up on screen, but is it showing up in the video? Okay, let's just check. So in other words, the answer is no. So in this case, that's the aspect ratio. Let's go and take a video now. And as you can see, the uh, aspect ratio changes quite a lot. So let's take a video again. And in this case, where am I? There I am. Is this showing up on screen? It should. And let's go and check. In this case, where am I? There I am. Is this showing up on screen? It should. So yeah, you can Is basically compare side by side. In this case, where am I? There I am. So that is a peculiarity, I suppose, the fact that doing that, uh, what do they call it, a quick take or whatever it is, it'll be less of a wide shot. So anyway, uh, you have those options. You have the regular one, slow-mo, which basically can take at a higher frame rate. You have time-lapse, uh, which can take at a much lower frame rate. And the cool thing with this is you can do it with all three of the lenses as well. And photo, and don't forget portrait mode. So portrait camera, create a portrait and blah, blah, blah. So this allows you to do the bokeh and whatnot. And of course the panoramic. So uh, these are all pretty standard. Uh, don't forget also in the newer iOS, you have slightly different layout here. So you have this kind of pull down menu where you can now adjust whether you want the filters or the timer. And this guy should be exposure settings. That's great. So this is the pro. Uh, you can change the aspect ratio here, of course. And also whether you want live photo on or off or live auto. I guess that's interesting. So it guesses if you need it on. I don't know. Um, and then flash auto on off. Those are interesting. So I guess this is basically just on or off. And this one decides if you want auto and here it's just on or off as well. So that's the sort of sub menu. And I don't know if there's any other differences in this case, no sub menu here. Don't forget, some people don't know this, but you can actually go from like a left to right, but, or right to left. If you adjust that, uh, let's see, go back. Portrait, you have all kinds of choices here. So this is actually maybe interesting uh, because portrait mode actually uses the zoomed camera normally, uh, but in this case, it's 2.5 zoom. So you either have to get further back or you're getting a lot closer in than you normally would have with like an iPhone uh, 11, which only had the 2X. So you can choose either one, but now they're basically further apart than they used to be. Uh, and then of course you have your different choices. Unfortunately, there's no person here, so I can't really demonstrate it in this little light box, but you get the idea. 
I think, I hope. And uh, if you want to adjust the frame rates on the videos, uh, don't forget that you actually can also adjust it here. So just touch this to cycle through. So you can do HD 60 frames, 30 frames. Um, I think that's the only two choices for regular video. For slow-mo, you have additional choices, 240 frames a second or 120 frames per second. So that's basically like four times or eight times, or whatever, higher frame rate. So also keep in mind that uh, there's actually some advanced menus even for these guys. So if you pull up, uh, you can see that you can basically turn on the light for this guy and also adjust, I guess, the exposure here. So you just drag this one in and out. Um, that's interesting. And if I pull that back down, I go to here and I can also adjust it for the slow-mo and the time lapse. So here I can basically turn the light on. I don't know how that's going to work. I guess it just stays on. And also, um, let's see what else my other options. I can change the exposure again which is probably important in this case because if I'm doing a slow-mo, I might want to uh, have a higher exposure so that it's not too dark. That actually happens. If you try to do slow-mo inside, that actually ends up being a problem. Uh, and then last but not least, uh, time-lapse. So I can actually even adjust the exposure here. And also keep in mind that this thing up at the top shows the exposure that I'm picking. So it actually shifts to plus and minus there. So uh, yeah, that's basically the camera settings within the camera app. Don't forget also that if you go here, there's a settings menu, sub menu for just the camera app. And that's way down here next to photos. And there's lots more options. So it's basically telling you what formats you want. If you want basically high efficiency, so lower file size, most compatible. Uh, if you, and I guess that's literally like that uh, HEIF versus JPEG. Uh, and you can adjust the recording rates and also the file size. If you really want to burn up a lot of space, do some 4K at 60 frames per second video. Uh, you can turn on and off HDR video, auto frames per second. Uh, so in low light, it'll actually go to a lower frames per second. I don't know if I want that or not. And then also, do I want the camera to remember the previous settings when I open it the next time? This is kind of a mixed blessing. Um, and then also for my slow-mo, I can adjust that. That's the same thing that we could adjust in the camera. Uh, do I want the sound to turn on and off? I don't like the sound. In some countries, this is not an option. So like in Japan and Korea, it has to make a sound every time you take a photo. Super annoying. Do I want to be able to scan QR codes? Uh, do I want to do a burst photo if I hit the uh, volume buttons? Uh, let's see what else. Do I want the on-screen grid? So that's like looking like this. Yeah, so there's like a grid, as you can see. Um, what else do we got? Scene detection for photo capture, some smart pho photography, basically. Uh, this is actually also interesting. Lens correction for the ultra-wide camera. So on the ultra-wide, let's turn that off and see if we can detect it. Um, I've seen this as a big problem if I'm doing like a, a group shot or something like that. Like you can see that the shape starts distorting. So somehow I think it like zooms in and kind of scales it back. So that's what it looks like with it off. Let's see if we can see a difference. Uh, yeah, and now it's back on and we'll switch back here. Does that look better? Yeah, maybe a little bit. It's, it definitely feels different when I'm doing this. So uh, the best way to see the distortion is if you ever like take a group picture and you have like a person put their head right here, you'll see the distortion, you'll see that their head gets like super stretched. So um, that's to be expected. But even in the like 1X camera, I've seen that happen as well. So just keep that in mind. So anyway, uh, that's basically it for the awesome camera on the iPhone 12 Pro Max. If you have any questions, if there's anything uh, that I missed that you want to see, do let me know. This is actually my personal phone. I just got it. So I'm going to be keeping this one. So if you ever want me to do a follow up video for this, do let me know because I basically will have it for the next year or two until the iPhone 13 comes out at least. So that's it for today. See you guys next time. Bye. Hey everyone, welcome back to Hotex. Today we have an iPhone 12 Pro hot off the presses. I just picked it up at the Apple store. It is the morning of the release, the 23rd of October.